Hello everyone, I'm back, I'm feeling good again, no more cold today, a full music making day, and I chose something that I have to work on urgently, there are some labels interested in that song, and I would love to present them the final, final, final version. It sounds already really good, I'll play you a bit in the intro, it's called Lost and Alone, featuring Robin Vane. It's my newest kind of song that I've been working on, showcased it to a couple of people at ADE, also DJed there, played it, Everyone likes it. I like it. I'm proud of this. Also, I wrote the lyrics on this myself. That's the first one. But I want to like squeeze out the last 5% in mixing and would love to share with you how I do that and what I consider and also play to you the before and after. It might be just a subtle change, but a change that is worth it, at least to me. So let's get started. What I always do first is going through all of the elements solo. Listen to them, hear for some noises, clicks, some annoying frequencies, push them, delete them, erase them, more decay, more attack, like these kind of things that you only hear when you listen to it solo. So first up, of course, the kick. And there's something I already like found. There's like there is a weird frequency to it. Let's let's listen to it without the EQ. Around 2K, there is there is some weirdness. You definitely need headphones or like a good speaker system. That's really like the more detailed stuff. I could lower it even more to get rid of it entirely. But then the kick starts losing frequencies that are necessary and that I actually like. So it's a compromise. Yeah, it makes the kick a little deeper. And I think like this, that disturbing frequency won't like bother me too much in, in the mix. Next up, we got the top kick. I think there is not much to change about it. Next up, bass line. Just getting the side chaining exact, maybe a little less. Let's also check the EQ again. I think it was cutting already a little too much. So right now, just listening to these elements, I actually would love to push 1K. So uh, I'll leave it as an option. It depends on the other elements. But right now, I would love to do it. I'll, I'll leave it as it is, but keep that in mind for, for later on. Let's go to like the main synth next. <laughs> Yeah, that one still is a little like too compact. Let's see what we can do about this. So actually, I, I sometimes use ozone on single elements and kind of master them in a way. If I think they're still not right, I still have like two, three other ideas. I just need to try it out. I'll go through some presets. I actually wanted to do something very specific, but maybe go through some presets and see what happens. <laughs> Actually, none of them make sense. It's a little too much. It needs to be more subtle. Like the imager, I would love to try out. Um, just maybe, I think three bands is enough. Like the very top, the sparkle, we can make wide. Let's see.
Yes, this helps a little. Let's check if we need to do something to the frequencies as well. Yeah, just like lowering the 200 to 300 hertz where like the lower notes are playing. So we're jumping a little out, resonating. You could also compress now the shit out of this, but I like to just like if frequency bothers me, just reduce it in volume and not tinker with like attack and um, release with like a compressor because it changes that by a lot. Let's add some some nice saturation. I think because this is Diva, can add like a hint more. There is also already the decapitator on top, but by Wave Factory Spectra, it's something I really like to to just add because you can like frequency per frequency band, like in EQ, you can add different kinds of uh, saturation. Uh, I like the, the tape and tube. Let's maybe try out the tape one. And that's usually what I do, just sweeping through it and listen what it sounds like. Like I know so many people, they open up an EQ or something else situation and just slap it on there because they read somewhere about it like needing to be on there. But I like just to try out stuff where I think it could work. And then within the plugin, just, just sweep through it, test some stuff, maybe some random stuff. And then again, bypass it, A and B compared and see where it leads you. Like our brain is really good after a couple of years of music production to kind of predict what you need and where it needs to be fixed and how to do it. But then at the end, there might be a better solution that your brain doesn't come up with and you just find out by, by trying it out. <laughs> I just like the 7.44 kilohertz uh, 3 dB of saturation on there. It gives it a little more, especially when the cutoff is close. It it adds like a little, like a little roughness to the to the upper frequencies. Let's check out the vocal. The vocal is still just a place order. The the singer needs to redo them, or he actually wants to redo them because he thinks he can do better. I think they're really good. Like. I, I wouldn't mind keeping the demo um, vocals on there, but um, we'll, he'll, he'll give it a try, do and send me something new. I'll put it in there if it's better, good. If it's not, also good. Oh, lost and broken, never woken, lost and Yeah, I think there's nothing I want to change. I know I already worked. Like, just look at all of the buses and like all of the automation that is going on there. I worked on the vocals probably half of all of the time that I spent on the song. Won't change them now. Um, yeah, let's go through some of the percussions. I'll let you know if there is anything special, but usually it's just EQing, reverb, checking the reverb if everything is all right. Uh, nothing too fancy. Never The bass, um, it's it's really in serum. It's actually the initial preset with just like the smallest amount of tweaking, just like a, a fat saw kind of and very wide. I think it's at a hundred percent, so it's wide entirely. And I'm missing underneath of the kick in mono like a bass. So I could now either add something else, copy it down maybe put a plugin on there that makes it mono underneath a certain frequency, but I think just layering another bass underneath, maybe just exactly the same one, copy it down, uh, select the MIDI, copy it down as well, copy the automation, um, and select the second one to be 100% mono, and mix it in a little. Yeah, it doesn't need the high frequencies because the high frequencies I want to be like, I, I want them to be wide. That sounds a lot better. You see on the, on the other bass, I actually just secured away the side signal on the lower frequencies. I think I got there. Yeah, I got actually two channel EQs there. 
One is um, getting rid of the side signal, and the other one is getting rid of the very low frequencies. So here is the click of the sidechain still there. Let's see. Yeah, that's a lot better. I don't know if you can hear it. But like you really need speakers that go low or headphones, but it now it embeds the kick a lot more. Before it was the kick in the middle and then on the sides, the bass. Now we also have like the bass right below the kick uh, playing together with it like it really nicely gives us like a huge bass and the kick just in between yeah also sounds less empty in the very low frequencies that was one thing that bothered me and i, I didn't really know what it was because i didn't remember like putting the the bass in full 100% stereo. But yeah, let's let's add the main again. There's a lot of reverb and delay. Very loud. I like that, but it's annoying while producing. You hit pause and it just keeps on and on and on. But yeah, I'm now I'm now reconsidering um, certain things I did, like while listening to it in the mix. For example, the kick right here, the cue that I did is good, but it's a little much. So I'll back it off by like two dB. It was already like removing too much of the the sound of the kick, and the part that bothered me, you don't really hear it as much in the mix. So again, like a compromise right in between there. And now I'll also check like the, the frequencies that I wanted to add on the bass if it makes sense in the mix. Probably not. Actually, yes, it, I like it. It's again very, very subtle, but you can hear like that then around 1K, like it. It just has a little more grit of the bass in there. The bass anyways doesn't play that much in those higher frequencies, so you, you have to push it a lot more in dB um, to actually hear what, what's there. So I think 5 dB sounds a lot, but for this sound, that's maybe just like half a dB or a dB. Just um, ties everything a little better together again. It's just on the side signal and just, just for the upper bass of the two kind of. That's a cool effect. No, but it all looks good until no balance. Also in span, I usually double check, but also already while producing to see if there's anything kind of missing or not missing. I also switched here to mono back and forth to check if it works in mono. I don't care that much about mono to be honest, because most clubs have really good stereo systems nowadays. Everyone is listening usually to stereo and someone that listens to my music on a phone that is mono although most phones actually already also start having stereo, then it doesn't sound as good. I don't care. I, I prefer having it sounding good for people that care about sound. So I opt for optimizing it for stereo 100%. I don't, I don't care that much for, for mono really. Just maybe like for the club, kick and bass makes sense to keep them a little more mono. But well, that's just my take. I know a lot of people that produce like very pop radio kind of music and they go 100% for mono all the time because uh, most people listen to their stuff actually on phones. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Some of the details I do, um, it's more like my approach to how to handle it than the actual real techniques. Just like carefully go through everything, listen to it in the mix, without the mix. Maybe before you do that, a week, don't work on it. Send it to some other people, get feedback by them. 
um, back in the days I always had a list like a list with like 20 30 50 things on there that I wanted to try out that I didn't like like with the seconds for example second 10 the clap sound enters too soon too loud whatever then someone else sent me feedback hey the bass is a little muddy then I wrote down bass is muddy and then I go in there improve it improve it improve it this helps me to focus on actually finishing songs because that's the most important if you don't finish the song you can't release it if you can't release it there is no one that can discover you as an artist no one discovering you no fan base no fan base no money no spotify streams no label it all just ties together and it's all down to you releasing the music so this one right here is done so far maybe tweaking the vocals maybe replacing the vocals eventually depending on the the singer songwriter i also want him to be as happy as possible with his performance and then trying to find a label and release it hopefully at the very beginning of next year can't wait love the sound love to hear your feedback see you tomorrow again back here in the studio that's it